Here is a beautiful girl, and she is very, very talented. A very good friend of mine, too. She's gorgeous. This is Sharon Tandy singing the flip side of an English release called Stay With Me Baby. Sharon sings, hold on! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedirk here. Got some online pickups to share with you guys. I'm going to kick it off with a 45 single I picked up on, followed by four LPs. And I mean, I usually like everything that I pick up, but this video in particular, we got some hot titles here. Stuff that a couple of them are new discoveries for me somewhat. A couple of these I've been trying to track down for years, literally. And really got some neat scores, so stick around for... Uh, what's to come here so anyways uh, following up on a video I did a few videos back about my health uh, considering the surgery happy to report that everything turned out really well I had it done last Wednesday October 2nd and yeah it checked out really well it was a lot better than my first surgery enduring that for the first time going under I mean it wasn't my first time going under anesthesia but it was, this would be my third time of course, got some swelling going on yet um, post-surgery and still have to do a checkup two weeks afterwards. And I've just been using ice packs, trying to heal up, and I'm already back at work. And funny enough, I don't even have any weight restrictions, but I've obviously still want to be careful um, not to overdo it. And I do have somewhat kind of a low stamina, kind of a low energy when I'm walking a lot because I do a lot of walking at work, so... Um, yeah, there's that, but otherwise, uh, really happy to report it's pretty easy to walk now, get get in and out of the car, and just not doing a lot of hefty activities like uh, doing laundry, getting groceries. I got a couple friends helping out with that, so um, otherwise, just really happy to report that um, the most pain I had was like the night of the surgery. Uh, it was like in my lower back, and just kind of had to find a way to sleep i had to sleep on my back which i don't like to do but um <laughs> i sure rested up that's for sure unfortunately it got in the way of some vacation days i wanted to spend uh going out of state and whatnot like i explained but uh, i got to take the physical condition first right the human condition and uh, but anyways thanks for all the comments and uh support for me going through all this financial crisis <laughs> um I, I mean we survive right we we just have to pull through and uh, thankfully it wasn't nearly as bad as I initially thought but it took a long time to uh, pay off the big bill followed up by paying rent along with that it's not a good time but uh, anyway it's moving on to the music I'm probably gonna open up the video with this track I think I can get away with it it's actually there's a beat club footage of this track being played this one I really scored on too because it was undergraded I think that's the right way overgraded undergraded um, it's in like kind of poor shape but it plays really well um, I think this was graded as fair but considering the price this was at just like the Chelsea LP I picked up on for like eight bucks this was around the same price and funny enough there's US copies of this out there floating around and the B side is really where this is at on this one so this is a track called hold on by Sharon Tandy it says plug side, good, but it's actually not the plug side. The plug side's the A side. Stay with me. And whoever wrote the, <laughs> whoever put the writing on there bad, I mean, props to you. Someone was a good listener. They enjoyed the B side much more. And the B side's really the standout track. I think the A side's kind of more of like a piano, kind of traditional pop ballad that Sharon was known for. But the B-side, Hold On, is a real gem. It's on Atco label, US promo here. And you just don't see these floating around a lot like the other one I have, the Fairy Tale. Guess I Was Dreaming, 45 on London Records, came out in the US. Just never got much airplay in the States, I don't think. 
Uh, but the cool thing about this one, so Sharon Tandy, I don't know her whole musical background, I guess. I just know this, know her for this track. Uh, it's a mod classic, kind of a mod freak beat classic here. Um, really tight, grooving rhythms. Um, she's actually backed up by the group. I'm going to get shamed in the comments for this. I don't know how you pronounce it because I don't speak the language, but I think it's pronounced Fleur de Lis or Fleur de Lis, something like that. I'll put the text somewhere in the video. And that group is very special. I, I still need to pick up on a couple compilations they have out, and they include this track too, Hold On. And I think the connection there is that Sharon Tandy at the time was dating Jimmy Page, and Jimmy Page actually produced a few uh, singles and sessions by that band, and uh, somehow got the backing band to perform on this track for her, Hold On. And I forget all the group members' names, but it's not Jimmy playing guitar on the solo here. You would maybe think so or assume so. But I think it's actually the, uh, I think it's Howarth who gets the writing credit there. I don't know if that's focusing in, but uh, really scorching, fury guitar solo going on. And uh, she's got this kind of sensual vocal styling about her um, that's kind of interesting as well. Kind of a raspier, kind of sensual voice. But like I said, this is one of those essential mod tracks you have to put on like a compilation or something. It's really special and thankfully it's it's loud enough. You might hear a little surface noise here and there, but it plays pretty strong um, considering it's a little worn. But uh, for eight bucks, eight to ten bucks, I'm not going to complain. This is one I've been trying to track down for a long time. Really happy to add it to the platter pack. And then uh, moving on to these LPs, so these these are also some hot items that I really got under the value that they go for. I think I just looked on Discogs, the promo copies were going for like almost 200 bucks for this, which is insane. And if you guys caught my, li my last live stream, I actually showcased most of this stuff already. But um, yeah, definitely more live streams to come this winter. And I got some LPs picked out for that, and we're definitely going to be spinning this one as well. Got this one for like 40 bucks, and I think this was a make offer, so I paid a little less out of pocket than what it was for. I think it was listed for like 40 bucks, paid 35 out of pocket, and uh, got a killer deal on this. Demian, it's on ABC label. Obviously, this is a post bubble puppy. This came out in 71. Just love this album art, kind of hiding under the dome, under the blanket. <laughs> I uh, just really love that kind of color scheme going on. And uh, yes, yeah, 1971, so obviously not nearly, there's really no psychedelic nuances on here. They're very much going in that direction of, say, sort of the progressive hard rock direction like a lot of groups were. But it's still very much kind of a, just a straight ahead hard rock effort with a couple blues undertones, but very tastefully done. There's a lot of like twin lead guitar attacks on this one too, uh, all throughout. And hearing it in stereo is really quite an experience on the vinyl. It's got a gatefold here. So as you can tell, there's a little bit of like general age wear, obviously, but uh, considering the condition this is in, this could still sell for probably over a hundred. But you always have to ask for photos on Discogs, and I did. Uh, so this was actually graded as in the fair grading, which you never really want to trek in that territory, but I was like, let's give it a shot. Let's see what the photos look like. And the photos were looking pretty good. I mean, it just looked like they had some dusty fingerprints, maybe just some scuffing going on on the disc. It was really good photos. And I just took a gamble on it, took it down to the shop on the degritter, give it a nice bath. This thing plays like a strong VG, soft VG plus around there. And considering how loud it is in the mix and it's a promo copy, couldn't, a couldn't have asked for any better deal. This was a really good score. But obviously it's got some scuffing. I don't know if it's coming in the light there or not, but it's kind of hard to see right now. Going into fall, the sun's kind of leaning a little bit, but yeah, it, this one shined up really well. And listening through headphones, getting a kind of closer, intimate mix, uh, it's really, really shines throughout. And um, yeah, I, I can't really compare the two between Bubble Puppy and Demian. They're totally different stylistically. 
but I would say this is this has jumped up in my ranking. I would consider this like a four and a half out of five star kind of LP. Really grew on me. Initially, I wasn't too crazy about it. The more I listened to it, there's a lot of great tightness here and um, just some kick-ass rock songs. Opening with Face the Crowd, which is the A side of the single they pushed out. Uh, Windy City coming, the last track on side A. Uh, they do a redux of Todd's tune, which I've always said Todd's tune's my favorite on Bubble Puppy. I probably prefer that version the most. Uh, I don't really know why they needed to rework it. It was kind of fine the way it was, but they brought it back. It's not like I dislike the tune anymore. And then the last track, Only a Loner, stands out too. It's a little more upbeat. Just a really nice kick-ass closer there. So I just can't believe Face the Crowd wasn't a classic rock staple. It really sounds like it could have been getting some good airplay, even up to this day and age with uh, the way classic rock radio is. <laughs> uh, it's got all the hooks. It's got all the grooves. Great vocal harmony dynamics. It's really something to hear. So, yeah, glad I got this cleaned up. 35 bucks for a promo. That is the way I wanted to score it. I mean, I did not want to pay over 100 bucks, which kind of seemed like to be the going rate of this one. And then, um, yeah, on to the next one, too. This is one that I definitely scored a little bit on the Permanent Records Instagram site. If you guys don't follow them, uh, you know, Lance at Permanent Records, I'm really enjoying his YouTube page. But every night they always post um, kind of just a whole collage of maybe 15, 20 LPs per evening. And you just have to write dibs in the comment section and it's yours if you're first. And this is one such case I just happened to jump on there on their account and see what, see what they were posting that evening. And this is one that's always kind of eluded me. I've seen it a couple times at the Omaha Record Show. Passed on it both times, and then I never saw it again. And you would think this band, you would think this one would pop up more. But uh, check your Rare Earth section if this LP's in there. Because we have Rare Earth's debut here. Dreams, Answers. It was on the Verve label before their own Rare Earth imprint. And before this, they were known as the Sunliners. They had a few singles prior to this. Uh, and one on MGM just before the album released with Land of Nod. And they had a B-side instrumental, which was a non-LP, also underneath the name the Sunliners. If you guys are afraid of Rare Earth or, you know, a little skeptical on their sound, because you see them all the time, you see Get Ready, um, whatever that other one is, the animated cover, which I think uh, had their big hit on it. I just want to celebrate. Well, anyways, Rare Earth's first album, this is some really hard-edged, kind of blue-eyed soul and very much heavily influenced by the counterculture psych era. You have a lot of, like, electronic transitional pieces moving throughout each track uh, with some kind of kooky, sort of kitschy narration in between, which is a lot of fun. Um, you can only get away with that in albums like this of the time period. But some really great tightness to it. And obviously, being from Detroit, they have the team, Dennis Coffey and Mike Theodore, who were through the Sus Sussex production. And you can just feel that tightness in that production sound on here as well. Um, opening with uh, Stop, Where Did Our Love Go? And I'd say my favorite tracks, Land of Nod. Um, just a really cool, upbeat kind of dance number. And then Mother Oats, Red Apple. That whole stream of tracks really works for me. Uh, they do an early version of Get Ready on here, which is pretty tight. And then Yesterday on 3rd Avenue, just for a few examples there. This, this is a really kick-ass record. And for the longest time, it's it's not really one of those that's terribly expensive. You could probably find this maybe between like 20 to 40 bucks, considering condition. Got this one for 20. Uh, it's listed VG, which is, which is very conservative. It plays a lot better, but... Um, yeah, this is just one that you don't see in the Rare Earth section too often. But if you do, this is the one to pick up on, man. So uh, really good soulful harmonics going on. Nice fuzz leads here and there. Uh, a lot of tight drumming going on. Very funky in nature. Um, and very much that kind of Motown merged with that hard rockin' Detroit sound. So I can highly recommend this one. Side one. 
Um, so yeah, and this is uh, just before they would sign on to the Rare Earth imprint. And I, I do like the second album, or the Get Ready album. I think it's got some pretty good tracks on there. That was sort of my introduction to them. I used to have that full length. Okay, and then on to these last two. These are sort of somewhat uh, new discoveries, especially this first one here. Uh, this is one that I got hip to from Alex Kerner, also known as Psychedelic Guy on Discogs, Rate Your Music. Uh, I visited him about two and a half years ago now, which is crazy how that flew by. But uh, he hit me to this one, and I actually found this record in Omaha um, last Friday, or not last Friday, but a couple of Fridays ago uh, when I went down there and just had no idea that it was this kind of LP. So this is um, kind of a neat surprise too because it's on the Void Records label, which can be kind of hit or miss depending on the quality. Uh, some, some of them sound really good, like my Search Party sounds really nice on Void. But then others like, I think it's Michelangelo um, and a few others just sound really poor on Void. So they hadn't really released anything in quite a while up until I think last year this came out in 2023 somehow fell through the cracks and this is a nice find here this is the kind of stuff i'm into these days so this is a band called the rain r-a-y-n-e and this is a new york based band i think maybe in the brooklyn area somewhere in the city nyc based and a bunch of teenagers here and they just cut this acetate and i do believe the fellow behind the void label found the actual acetate it's like a one-sided acetate, uh, which is featured here on side one. And then the whole side two, it's got some cover sessions that they did, these three tracks. Um, Sunday will never be the same, Somebody to Love, and Do You Believe in Magic. And then it says After the Rain here. This, you can just avoid if you ever pick this up. <laughs> it's basically, they just had to kind of cramp some other material that they did in later years, and it's actually not very good at all. But side one, just think of this as sort of like an EP or something like that. Kind of a one-sided disc like that lid record. But uh, yeah, this is kind of more based around like a teenage kind of garage pop. But sort of like in the folk rock vein as well. Very moody in nature. It's got kind of downer vibes. Kind of this teenage angst, lost romance kind of thing. Sort of in the vein of, say, the art of loving or the love exchange. There's... Shared male, female harmonies on here. And uh, it's actually really good. I listened to this a few times and um, some of these tracks are definitely on heavy rotation. Tracks like When You Have Gone. I think Graffiti's on YouTube yet. But otherwise that's the only track I could find on there. Um, yeah, I found this for like, I think 12, 15 bucks on Discogs. Not selling for too terribly expensive. I think it was 15 in the at Grapefruit when I went to Omaha. So, yeah, just a really nice discovery. I kind of like these archival, shelved sort of sessions uh, still coming out to this day. Because a little insert here talking about their back history. And it's actually got a connection to Steven Tyler, who, what's his real last name? It's on here somewhere. Steven Tallarico. I think that's how you pronounce it. He uh, went to high school, the same high school as these guys did. And he had the name The Rain made out for this band. He was either going to name his band The Rain or The Chain Reaction, which if you guys know, he had a, I think one or two singles under The Chain Reaction on the date label. So they ended up using the name The Rain. Um, so that's sort of a Steven Tyler connection to this record. And it's also got a couple other names notable. I think they all went on to do some pretty successful things, but the ones that come to mind here, the Sarna siblings here, Lisa Sarna, I think she was maybe a girlfriend or a producer to Rick James, um, like in the late 70s, early 80s around there. And then Barry Sarna went on to write some big hits for like Janet Jackson, uh, amongst many others. That's the one that came to mind when I was uh, reading up on him. Um, I think it says that in the liner notes or online somewhere. Became Shalimar's music director. Yeah, wrote songs for Janet Jackson. Uh, he played keyboards for Glenn Fry and Joe Walsh, apparently. So he was definitely... Uh, so they definitely had some uh, connections later on in the music business, so that's kind of cool. But if this was officially released back in the day, 
on, say, a private press sort of release, a full length called The Rain. I could totally see this being a as an archive favorite for some. It's um, definitely got some great things going for it. A lot of moody organ swings in here too. Good harmonies. Like I said, very much in that love exchange, art of loving kind of area. I think uh, both bands were from like the East Coast anyway, so it all kind of ties together as far as that sound goes. And then finally, this last one, this is one that I picked up uh, online as well. Ever since I went on my Iowa trip, I got kind of inspired to look into this label more. And I've always known there was a comp compilation out there of the IGL label, Iowa Great Lakes. Uh, when I took my Iowa trip, I was just kind of fascinated by all the garage singles once again. And I did not realize these two compilations came out back in the uh, early 90s, like 94s came out. But I picked up on one of them, the best of IGL label, Folk Rock. And yeah, this is definitely folk rock, but it's also very garage poppy. I wouldn't say it rocks out too hard or it's too crazy, but it's very much that kind of loner, downer, sort of, again, very teenage, 12-string uh, guitar garage pop going on. And this is like some of the best I've ever heard in one collection. It's just amazing how uh, all the local bands from South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa traveled just to record there and cut a 45. And uh, the passion for the music, I mean, these guys were definitely listening to Bands like the Birds and the Bo Brummels, especially. But uh, there's the track listing, and there's a full album upload on YouTube, which I do recommend. Uh, opens up the three tracks by the Scavengers, which are some <laughs> some really excellent tracks, man. And then I think my favorites are kind of near the end of the album, with "Summer Love" by Napoleon One and his relatives, which I've used in some of my videos. "Someday" by the Pawnbrokers and Come and See by the Kingpins. Uh, funny enough, there's no Nebraska groups on here. I think it, Omaha had its own studio, so they didn't really, I guess they didn't have any reason to travel to Milford, Iowa, which is where the studio was based from. But IGL was also responsible for uh, Shadrach Chameleon and a few other LPs as well. But yeah, just the thought of, um, I guess there was like a jamboree and uh, they recorded for different high school groups around this time. And I just kind of love, you know, Iowa to me is very much like Nebraska. I mean, just yards and yards of cornfields all day, just kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere. And there's just kind of this lonesomeness in the music that really reflects sort of the way life was back in the 60s, living in uh, small town, rural Iowa. And I just, I just love the results that came from this. It just really reflects on, you know, the way that they were living, just buying birds, singles, Bo Brummel singles, and wanting to get their own 12 strings and play just like them. And the passion just really flows through this one. So there's really no lulls on this for me. It was all overall very excellent. Um, just hearing them all in one collection like this, because uh, I was familiar with some of these singles, like I said, the Napoleon One and the Kingpins, Pawnbrokers. Uh, some of them I forgot about. The Torres, the Torres, they were from South Dakota. So I'm glad to pick up on that. And obviously, uh, the label is definitely inspired by, I would say, Roulette Records. <laughs> but uh, it's got a very cool insert as well, talking about their backstory. There's a couple of CD releases too back in the day that have all of these sessions. I guess back in 1980, they just decided to chuck all the remaining 45s left in the studio, which was, oh, just the, it just breaks my heart knowing that. So hopefully one day I'll scoop up one of the IGL. I do have, I think I have one IGL label, but it's not really garagey. It's kind of more of a, kind of a pedestrian sort of folk pop thing. But uh, there's a shot of the studio there. And they had the studio right behind a TV shop uh, in small town Milford. So very cool. Learning about their back history. And yeah, just to, I mean, considering this compilation is as old as me, it's kind of nice that early on they just thought, well, we better put all these tracks together and archive this thing because this is like a just a great artifact of just 
collection of singles here. And it's on the Get Hip label as well. It's Get Hip Archive series. So yeah, I think there's a second one in this series. And then of course, like I said, the, I think it's on the Arf Arf recordings. Uh, came out a few, there was like a couple different CDs with all of the sessions in, in, in total. So might pick up on that someday. We'll see. I wish it had a vinyl release, but um, I guess that's a nice alternative. But anyways, hope you guys are doing well. And I'm just kind of just taking it easy after the surgery yet. And I just need to get back to some listening habits. Because <laughs> um, I do have a whole other stack to show. Stuff that I picked up lo locally. I have like four or five LPs. And I just hadn't really... I just been kind of prepping to go to surgery and not so much listening to stuff, but got to some listening sessions last night. And so we made up for it. I'm just kind of getting back in the loop of things and um, really loving the weather too. Just having the windows open and smell the Christmas in the air and letting that air just flow through. It's just loving it. But anyways, uh, take care. Now let me know what you think of my finds. And I strongly recommend some of these. I mean, the IGL label compilation on YouTube is uh, something you want to check out. And uh, we'll see you soon.